I can't believe that Andrew and I owned such an expensive play chip set that was worth more money than either of us had combined in our bank accounts when we moved from Fort Wayne, Indiana to Las Vegas. That is gambling. So when I was 19, I was obsessed with poker. I loved everything about the game. That to be good, you needed to be able to read people. You had to be good at math. And that even though luck was a factor, it would never determine your fate. Because in poker, in the long run, the most skilled players will win the money. I loved that. I loved it so much, in fact, that the first professional poker player I met, I totally fell in love with. And I'm still married to him. Look at him, look how cute he is. On our first date, we went and played poker. We ran around all of these underground games in Fort Wayne, Indiana, because it's illegal to run a casino. There were ways around it, and there was this one place called the Hold'em Palace. And it was owned by this really quirky guy whose favorite hand was the worst pair you could get. His favorite hand was pocket twos. And the nickname for this hand are called ducks. He, of course, had a card protector of a little rubber ducky. And every time he had his favorite hand, he would show and be like, quack, quack. <laughs> and that was like way back in the day when there were nicknames for all the hands. Among my favorites are snowmen for eights. 10-4, the trucker hand. 10-4, over, out, I, something like that. Ace-King is called the Anna Kornikova. Do you know why? Because Ace-King looks good but never wins. First of all, so mean, and also really untrue. Ace-King's a great hand. Now, the way Ducks guy got around the law was that he owned a poker store. So you could go in and buy chips, cards, poker tables, and then he would run the tournament buy-ins through the store. If you happened to win, part of your prize pool winnings would actually be allocated to the store. So 5% of your winnings would go on a gift card. From the time I was 19 to 21, Andrew and I played at this place all the time. He crushed, I crushed a little. He was way better and he pretty much has taught me everything that I know. When I turned 21, we decided that we were going to move to Las Vegas to pursue our dreams young, naive, ambitious kids. So we had to spend our gift card, which at the time had gone up to like $2,000, which was so much money at the time. We wanted to do it in one foul swoop, so we looked at the best chips money could buy. These are Clay Paulson Top Hats. These are what they have in the, in the real casinos. And we got as many as we could, we maxed it out, and we bought this. Now, as fate would have it, as I think it often happens when you say, you know what, I'm gonna go for a dream. It's like the universe says, really? Are you sure you wanna do that? Because right before we moved, Andrew actually sort of got scammed in a home game that he and a friend were running and he lost his entire bankroll of like $7,000, which is a whole nother story in itself. And that same week before we left, he was playing pickup basketball and he got his nose broken by an elbow. And of course, being a professional poker player, he didn't have health insurance. So we paid for his surgery on a credit card. So when we packed our bags, our whole lives, all we had, which was mostly just the clothes on our back and this chip set here. And the first few years in Vegas were really hard. We had no money and no friends and though we were kind of a big deal in Fort Wayne, um, we were turds in Las Vegas. I don't think that's the right term I was looking for. I meant we were like big fish in a small pond and then we were like minnows, turds. I don't know where I got turds. Whatever, you get the point. It was just, it wasn't easy. And, and there were times where we asked ourselves like, I don't know if we're gonna make it. And these chips always served as a reminder of 
where we came from and how hard we could work and how much we were willing to risk and how brave we were. And they will always be that reminder. 